Excel tutorial Bruges Pagan test. Multiple regression assumptions consist of independent variables correct specification, independent variables no linear dependence, regression correct functional form, residuals no autocorrelation, residuals homocysticity, and residuals normality. This topic is part of multiple regression analysis with Excel Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Residuals homocysticity consists of evaluating whether regression residuals or forecasting errors have a constant variance. This is evaluated through Bruce Pagan heteroskisticity test, which consists of using squared original regression residuals data as dependent variable together with original regression independent variables and assessing if independent variables are jointly statistically significant. For full reference, I recommend that you read Bruce and Pagan, a simple test for heteroskisticity and random coefficient variation, published in Econometrica in 1979. As a formula, we have that current period original regression forecasting errors or residuals to the power of 2 are equal to an alpha intercept plus, and here we have the example of a regression with two independent variables, therefore beta 1 coefficient multiplied by x1 independent variable at time t plus beta 2 coefficient multiplied by x2 independent variable at time t plus this regression forecasting errors or residuals. And what we're testing is Bruce Pagan Lagrange multiplier statistic p value. If Bruce Pagan Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was less than alpha percentage level of statistical significance, then residuals were heteroselastic with one minus alpha percentage level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if Bruce Pagan Lagrange multiplier statistic p value was greater than alpha percentage level of statistical significance, then residuals were homocedastic with one minus alpha percentage level of statistical confidence. Great, so let's go into the Excel file so that we can study residuals homocysticity with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within Bruce Pagan test Excel file. So first let's begin with the data. This is found within Bruce Pagan test data and notice we have the following columns of data. Column A where we have dates and this dates with a monthly frequency from the beginning of 1997, so we select A6 and then we press Ctrl down arrow on the keyboard, so we go into the end of the column and we see that they go all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 20 years of data. So we press Ctrl up arrow, down arrow to go into the beginning of the column. And then we have the following columns of data. At column B, colored in green, we have stocks dependent or explained variable. This corresponds to SPY ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the standard and Poor's 500 index, and this corresponds to its arithmetic monthly returns of adjusted close prices, adjusted close prices which were adjusted for dividends and splits. And then colored in red from column C to column J, we have the independent or explanatory variables. First, we have four rates, the effective monthly yield of one-year treasuries, 10-year treasuries, high yield corporate bonds, then for prices, we have monthly inflation or deflation for CPI or consumer price index, PPI or producer price index. Then the prices monthly arithmetic returns for oil. And then we have macroeconomic variables. In this case, we have monthly arithmetic change of industrial production index and PCE or personal consumption expenditures. So what we're going to do next is perform the original regression with stocks dependent variable and then we have all those independent or explanatory variables from column C to column J. And this result is found within original regression worksheet. Notice that it has already been done before recording this video tutorial and its summary output has been printed and formatted. So to do this regression it was done using data tab, analyze here, data analysis tool pack and its regression feature. So from this summary output, we're going to specifically here focus on the coefficients. So we have intercept and all the independent or explanatory variables corresponding coefficients at column B from B21 all the way into B29. So going back into Bruce Pagan test data, 
we're using those to calculate that original regression residuals and then the residuals to the power of 2. So those forecasting errors or residuals, as we can see by selecting K6, they are the difference. And we can see within the formula bar of B6, which is stocks, corresponding dependent variable, that's the original data, minus the corresponding forecast from that corresponding regression. So we have within parentheses the original regression B21. Notice that this corresponding cell has been fixed and that's done by pressing F4 on the keyboard or adding the corresponding dollar sign before column and before row so that we can copy this formula all the way down to the column and that's where we have the intercept. Plus original regression B22, that's where we have the first coefficient multiplied by C6 which is the data for one year treasury, its effective monthly yield at that corresponding date. Plus original regression B23, that's the following coefficient multiplied by D6, which is the corresponding effective monthly yield of 10 year treasuries at that corresponding date, and so on with all the corresponding coefficients multiplied by the corresponding data. Notice that the coefficients have been fixed, but the data is not being fixed. And that's done so that we can copy that formula down by double clicking on the bottom right hand corner square. So once we have this forecasting errors or residuals from the original regression, we can calculate their squared values. And by selecting here L6, we see that they're equal to K6 to the power of 2. So now we're going to perform Bruce pattern test regression. In this case, we're going to have as a dependent or explained variable column L with those residuals or forecasting errors to the power of 2. And as independent or explanatory variables, we have from column C all the way into column J. So that corresponding regression is found right here at Bruce pattern test regression. Again, this regression was performed before recording this video tutorial. It was done using Data tab, analyze specifically data analysis tool pack and its regression feature. Again, the corresponding output being printed and previously formatted. As we can see here by scrolling down, we have the corresponding coefficients for the intercept together with all the independent or explanatory variables. In this case, using as dependent or explained variable the original regression residuals or forecasting errors to the power of two. And specifically, we're going to focus right here into the corresponding Lagrange multiplier and its corresponding significance LM or its p-value for Bruch pattern test. So by selecting here cell G16, we see that it's equal to B9. That's where we find the R square from this regression multiplied by B12. That's where we find the number of observations. And to calculate it associated p-value, we select H16 and we see the following function here within the formula bar, which is chi-square.distribution.rt for right tail. And within it, we include, first of all, G16, which is the Lagrange multiplier test statistic for Bruch pattern test, comma B16, which is the regression degrees of freedom. Excellent. So here we have the Bruch pattern. Lagrange multiplier test statistic and Bruch pattern Lagrange multiplier test statistic associated p value in this case used as significance lm to have the same format as significance f right here. And with this corresponding test statistic and the associated p value, we can perform the test as described within the slides. Perfect. So now that we finished studying Bruch pattern test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading, or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.